Hey guys, it's time to go into the other half of our ultimate guide for this pairing. Last week we had the spider foes, it's time to dive in to those web warriors. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Big Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. And we're back with another Ultimate Guide. We know you guys have been really enjoying them. Uh, so we've been plowing through this series. And joining me again to break down some Web Warriors is Mr. Quinn Duggan. Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? Uh, thwippy thwip. Mm. Thwippy thwip. <laughs> okay. Um, Quinn, Web Warriors, um, you've played a bit of them over the past. Yeah, I've, I've been playing them a little bit this week, like only a handful of games, but yeah, I've played them a bit. How, how are you How are you finding them at the moment? Because they've always been uh, fairly fairly strong, haven't they? I mean, I've given up and thrown them in the bin because they don't kill things and I like killing things. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, I know what I am. It's bloodthirsty. They don't do the thing I want. This, this is true. And it's, it, and it's not like they are the worst at killing things. It's just that... It's most definitely not their. Uh, it's not their forte, is it? Their first and oh, only they're, objective. They're not spider foes, right? They're not this is true. Foes. This is true. Um, quick one, guys, just so, uh, to let you guys know what to expect in this. This is a series designed for new players coming to the game, so pivoting out of the core box into your first affiliation, or indeed any player looking to set up a new affiliation. So we're going to break down two full rosters. The first one is a budget roster based on the three box challenge. The second one is a no money, no object roster where I gave Quinn, give Quinn all the money in the world and he gets to spend as much as he wants. Um, I wish. <laughs> that it will happen every video, won't it? That joke. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, gonna happen it's that repeating time, gag. <laughs> Like the thing is, it, it doesn't even get less funny because, like, the it's so low at this point, it can't go yeah, lower. It, we never, it was never funny. Um, no. So, so yeah. Um, so, Quinn, let's jump straight in then to the Web Warriors budget roster. And starting off, as we always like to do, let's take a look at the characters that we've brought along with us. So, we've taken Spider Man Miles Morales, we've got Ghost Spider, we've got Venom, we've got Amazing Spider Man, and we've got Black Cat. Those five characters make up our three boxes. So, that's CP10. CP09 and CP37 and then rounding out the roster we've got Baron Zemo, Black Widow, Captain you guys know the you guys know the shtick by now right we've got the best best five plus splashable characters from the core box yeah if, if you haven't learned <laughs> the list of like splashable characters in the core box by now what this, are you doing with this you? is like, the one probably yeah, this something is the one. interesting I imagine <laughs> um so Quinn quite nice again because we do have Spider-Man uh, Peter Parker in the core box. Yeah. I'm going to say less of an impact on the Web Warriors as Doc Ock is on Spider Foes, and I think that comes oh, down yeah. to threat level first of all. Four versus three, splashing a four threat is always that bit more difficult. Um, but I also think Doc Ock is obviously one half of that really, really nice tactics card uh, for the uh, for the Spider Foes, and we don't get anything like that with with Spider-Man, do we? Or at I least mean, nothing we want to play. I mean, we, we had uneasy allies. We but, could I mean, we could use uneasy allies, but we but we chose not to. Um, because, I mean, we, we like having cards that do something impactful <laughs> and not terrible. Mm. Let's break down uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales then, because he's really the, the linchpin of all of this, isn't he? Um, and he does quite a lot. And is a three threat leader as well. Um, so three threat leader, first of all, that's a big nice tick box, isn't it? it? Oh yeah. It makes it so much easier to build that core of your of your squad. Um, but he's also got some some really nice players. He's got a placement, which is always, you know, always really nice. But off the back end of that placement, he rolls more dice. Uh, is it his builder attack that he rolls more dice? His builder attack, he yeah. gets more dice. So it goes from a four dice attack to a six dice attack, which is very nice on the free throw. Quinn, the other thing I want to put in there as well um, comes around his control piece. Um, yes, it's not as good as Black Cat's. Black Cat's superpower, as we'll get on to, just lets her steal anything. Um, but Venom Blast, it's an energy attack, but at the back end of it, um, I don't even think it needs to do damage, does it? It just no, automatically it happens. happens um, and it forces them to drop whatever it is that they're holding. Um, not, not just whatever it is, but all of whatever it is. All of whatever so it is, yeah. If you've got has four hammers on them, scatter them to the wind. Take them down. Now, it doesn't have the kicker on there, does it, where 
Miles then gets to just pick them all up no. for free. He has to spend the power to pick them up. But as you mentioned, you get to scatter them, so you can put them in four directions, making it difficult for your opponent to get them if you can't get them. Um, but it can be a huge VP swing, can't it? And with that movement that he's got, plus that range three um, placement that he's got, he can be... He's a really good candidate to go and track somebody down who has yeah. picked up a scroll or an alien core or something a core ship or something like that isn't it i mean he's also like a great candidate to be your your own runner that has that absolutely because he's got stealth he's extremely mobile he can do like two moves in the web swing in a turn which covers a tremendous it's distance. a huge amount of distance yeah uh he's also you know on his uh web swing kick or whatever it's called you know the, the builder uh, he's got that wild throw on it. That's yep. a great thing for just like if you've got the Cree core, for example, and you can't like actually double move away, spend one of those actions kicking your pursuer in the face, throw him away short. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's really good. Like I say, he is a for me, Quinn. He's up there in terms of leaders actually in this game. When you look at what he does, and we haven't even got onto his leadership yet, which is. <laughs> Which is also really good as well. Oh, so, yeah, and obviously Miles has spider senses. I think it would be remiss. Of, of, of course, that. yeah. So he gets to re-roll uh, defense and dodge dice? If I, two defense and two dodge defense, dice. Two dodge dice. So, Quinn, let's talk about his leadership ability then. So, great responsibility. Um, basically, he is expen extending those spider senses out, uh, and all of his allies can re-roll one defense die. Now, there's no limit to you know once per turn or anything like that but if they are contesting or holding an objective token they may modify and re-roll skulls failures and it's not just that one re-roll is it it's okay. any of their re-rolls on on their attacks on their defenses on their on their dodge rolls um and that's real good um, combos really nicely with any sort of character that has an offensive reroll. Yes, I find yeah. like Zemo, for example. Just you know, whenever you're rolling with Zemo and you see a skill, you're just like, ah. Oh. But with this, you're just like, nah. Okay. Yeah. I'll reroll it. Yeah, he's he's really good. As you mentioned, what you know, wall crawler. So you know, yes, he's only a medium move, but he can get over places that other characters may struggle to you know to, to 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 climb over and that sort of thing and as you mentioned then he's got his stealth as well so yeah all, all round he is and he's a really really good leader um and and i think he sort of sets the tone really doesn't it for the for the entire affiliation um the next character i want to talk about quinn is your girl gwen stacy aka ghost spider because Miles has loads of movement, but if anyone does manage to get in range and get an attack off, you'll often find Gwen within range four, kind of stopping you from making that attack, won't won't you? Yeah, you could say that she's a lifesaver. You could say, you could say she's a lifesaver. Um, so she has two really nice superpowers: uh, one active, one reactive. First one, web line. Uh, pushing an enemy character within range for and in line of sight so you've got to be in line of sight uh, short towards this character um, again really nice in helping that control play of rather than your bigger characters having to spend actions on and we've talked about this before can not we such such meager things as moves um, you just get Gwen to to pull them towards you um, yeah. or you know gamma shelter you activate her last or any other, you know, any other contest um, secure where you've got to be stood near the point. And she's just firing these web lines off here, there and everywhere um, and pulling people away. Now, she can, a person can only be affected by this once per turn, but she can use it as many times as she wants. So 10 power, she can pull, you know, five people off points, which is... Yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Um, pretty damn good, to say yeah. the least. I mean, and, and also like she's never going to struggle to get an angle for the pull either with her no. like, long move. No, not at all, not at all. She and, can also be action efficient as well, which we'll get onto later. I was going to say really, really action efficient. Um, but then lifesaver Quinn. I mean, this is really for me where she comes into her own, uh, especially as you say if you've got a Miles holding an objective, somebody does manage to get within range three of him. Um, and, you know, basically, if 
if if a, if a Miles or any other character ally character is attacked, uh, in line of sight of gain and 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 within range four, you spend two power and basically push them short towards you. It always sounds weird to say push towards. It feels like it's at that point it should be called pull, but yeah, yeah. a a push towards, um, which for the most part can be can be really really good. Um, there are sometimes I've found Quinn where you don't want to trigger it because of the way it gives back the activation. The yep. um, I saw an, an example I'll give is something I saw somebody do not too long ago uh, at a local gaming store. Um, it was um, Corvus Glaive and he'd done his uh, death, death blow. blow he triggered flurry. his flurry. flurry he'd yeah. moved up towards um, Miles and then Ghost Spider had life saved him. Now, he's already done two parts of that one attack. And even though he's done the first part of his attack, that lifesaver still triggers him to get another action. Um, yeah, because it's not actually any sort of refund type effect. It yes. It's just you have another action. Do yeah. with it whatever you wish. Which, yeah, the, 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 the Web Warriors player doing it didn't realise there was a bit of a contentious talk over it. And I had to explain to them actually no guys this is how it works it's a it's a weird unique situation so that's the only thing i would say quinn is that on that second attack that flurry is probably not the best time to do it um, there are although there are some uh really fun instances where you can just ruin your opponent's power economy with it where oh, absolutely you know, they pay for a glaive's edge you pull them out of the way they don't get that glaive's edge on the next attack they do and what, they've already spent the power on it. What I really like, Quinn, is where they've uh, spent the three power on a glaive's edge and Thanos has spent two power on his, um, whatever death his attack one is. Yep. Yeah, death decree. <laughs> so five power just poof, gone. Um, and actually, so just, just to clarify what we're talking about there, Quinn. So any superpowers you spend to boost an attack, you spend before you do the attack. You then target you then spend the power for the for the attack. So in this instance, the power you spend for the attack would be refunded, but any other power before that, as oh, you mentioned, Quinn, is just lost, so isn't it? the power for the attack isn't actually refunded. It's just never spent. It's never place. spent in the first it's place, is it? Yeah. Beforehand. yeah. But if we take like Glaive's Edge, for example, uh, it's an active superpower. During the next strike or death blow, you so you pay your three power for that. You then declare the strike or death blow. Yeah. Then Gwen zips them out of the way. You still declared it. That attack has been a thing that then gets rid of the glaive's edge. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And it also triggers. Um, obviously, glaive's edge doesn't do this, but any go back going back to the death decree, anything that is you know this superpower may only be used once per turn. You've used it. It's gone. Absolutely. You can't. Yeah. You can't then use it again. So. So many, you know, I mean, we, we've talked a lot about Gwen there, but I feel like she's an absolute core uh, of the... She's uh, definitely of the, you know, of the screen time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I don't want to go too much into Venom, Quinn, because we spoke about Venom a lot in the previous uh, spider Force video. Guys, check that out after this video if you haven't done already. Um, and it's a lot of the same, really, isn't it? What what he brings for the spider Force, he's he's bringing to... Um, to Web Warriors as well. Um, yeah, I mean, he's got, like, kind of a better version of Gwen's pull, which is yes. pretty cool. Yes, yeah. Um, that's, it. that's her web line pull, isn't it? That's not her yeah. not her lifesaver pull. Uh, it's got Lethal Protector for that, which is uh, oh. which is a beautiful card. Um, Quinn, I want to get on to the second leader then, which is Amazing Spider-Man. Now, we had the conversation, didn't we, of whether or not we include him in it. I think the fact that him and Black Cat are the only other two box uh, affiliated Web Warriors characters. Um, it made sense from a from a yep. monetary perspective, but also I think it makes sense, especially in a budget roster where you want to try different things. I think for the vast majority of the times, Miles is going to be your guy for your leadership. Well but Miles' leadership is far more, like, just generally applicable, right? You don't need to plan for Miles' leadership. It just happens, and it's always good. Yes, yeah. Whereas it, it's a lot more niche, isn't it? The the friendly neighbourhood spider team. Um, and it, it, it's a bit, you know... I mean, there, there are certain matchups where actually being able to dish out slow willy-nilly is really nice. 
coming up against an enemy Ghost Rider or something like that can be really I, good. I think but... also a really nice use of the place part of that leadership is actually against Juggernaut. Because Ooh, yes. Juggernaut is actually an issue for Web Warriors because none of their like pulls actually work on him. Yes. Because he has a magic hat. Um so being able to do magic, this, sorry, just... sorry, are we are we describing describing his helmet of Sitarak as a ma- I mean, I suppose technically it's a I magic mean, hat. Look, it is a magic hat. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, I don't care. It's a magic hat. It's a hat and it's magical. It's a hat and it's magic. Okay, I'll give you that. But uh, so you know, the other part of it allows you to then, if they've already got slow on them, place them. Yes. Which is really, really good against Juggernaut, because just getting him out of the way or, like, pulling him towards your team to get some punishment, like, it's just really nice. <laughs> yeah, it can be really good. And as you say, um, g- going back to, you know, Gwen being able to um, move people around and that sort of thing, it's another form of being able to do that, isn't it? So, yeah, exactly. You know, like, you, you sort of... Like, you know, if you're playing on sort of a spread scenario and, like, you know, say a D-map and, like, your opponent has priority, you can kind of just sort of chain your activations to activate whoever is stood next to the character they just did and go, okay, you're stood on the point. Pay one. Pay Shove one. you off it. Go Move. away. Go yeah. away. Yeah, go exactly away. that. Um, and, I mean, there is nice synergy with uh, All Webbed Up with this uh, leadership as well, right? Well, there is because it, it it sort of triggers it beforehand for you, doesn't it? Um, which is which is really nice, um, and it also means that you're not having to um, use one turn to dish out the slur and then another turn to dish out the place. You can do them both in the same term as a turn as well. So yeah, it's uh, it can be really nice. It can be really nice. Um, I, I, he's got two two attacks that are, are, are pretty damn good. Um, uh, Spider Strike is um unique as a builder in the way it works uh you know okay it's a five dice range three attack power equal to the damage dealt that's pretty standard but that momentum off the back end of it catches a lot of people out they don't realize what it is and and how it works um and you know basically choose another character within range (laughs) within range well you know place this character within range one and then uh, chosen character suffers damage as if Spidey was uh, was thrown into them. Um, yeah, because which... effectively, like he's sort of pulling himself past whoever he punched, and then hitting into someone, hitting them on the way, hitting them on the way past. Yeah, um, and that extra three, um, that extra three damage straight up from you know from this attack. All of a sudden, you know, a five dice builder with a guaranteed. Uh, it's not guaranteed, but with a it's trigger no for no, but with a, with a, with, a, with a trigger it's for <laughs> with a with a trigger for three extra damage on the back end becomes really really nice um and then whatever a spider can uh, again it's got an unusual thing at the end of it with catch uh, after this attack is resolved you may choose an interactive throwing feature size two or less within three which is quite nice destroy it and then again it's as if that uh, that building had been thrown into him that's significantly easier to trigger you know eight oh, dice yeah. you would expect to to get a wild uh, it's one in eight on each dice, so you know it's the the, the odds are the odds are good. Um, one thing I want to talk about on Amazing Spider-Man Quinn is witty banter, mm. because this is another one that catches a lot of people off guard, and particularly the fact that uh, you can target your opponent using using wilds on this quite a lot, can't you? Yeah, just being able to go. Uh, oh, you got triggered for that attack. Reroll it. Just re- re-roll that one dice that's triggering, like, your throw or your condition or your whatever else happens. Yeah. Re-roll it. I don't, yeah. I don't care. Go away. And then, Quinn, he also has things like, you know, he's got the web swing, which is really yep. nice. It also adds which, dice to his spider strike. It increases um, the odds of that momentum trigger. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, unlike Miles, this is the amazing Spider-Man. This guy doesn't have side of spider sense. He has mastered the spider sense. Um, so he gets to reroll any number of his defense or dodge dice. So I think that then coupled with being able to manipulate your attacker's attack dice make him significantly harder to kill, I think, when doesn't he, it? He's the, exceptionally the tanky, especially if you play him under Mars's leadership and you can then reroll skulls on top of that. Yes, absolutely. It, absolutely. Yeah. Um, like, so, yeah. so if you can get like an extract on him, like a creek or, or a scroll, people are forced to attack him. 
And yes. that's just a sad time for everyone involved that isn't ASM. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it makes it really, really I can say he's he, he's deceitfully tanky. And it's not necessarily his core stats, which aren't bad. You know, four four three. You know, are, are okay. And he doesn't have a huge amount of stamina, but it's those rerolls that yeah. uh, that really make the difference. Um, so lastly, then Quinn Black Cat Felicia Hardy. Uh, I mean, I think we've included her in videos before, but let's just quickly run through what she's got. So four dice builder. It's okay, right? That's it's fine. Okay. It's got a pierce on there, which is which is quite nice. Um, Troublemaker is a is a weird one. Doesn't dish out a lot of damage. Very um, yeah. So it's capped at one, but it automatically dishes out a stagger condition. Yeah. It's a bit good, um, isn't it? For two power, like if you had a superpower coin that was cost an action, spend two power, dish out stagger, that'd be quite good. Um, yeah, like especially on a three threat, three threat character who doesn't have a lot going for them offensively, therefore disincentivizing your actual desire to do attacks with the character, you're fine just, like, doing that to someone and then just long moving away. Yeah, come, well, come and me. the fact that, you know, she's got Elusive on a wild there as well, yeah. um, which is, you know, which is nice because it, you know, it's, you know, yes, it's nowhere near as long as her long move, but, you know, if she does have... Um, a a token on her or something like that, some sort of asset that maybe restricts how often she can move, that sort of thing. It's a nice way of being able to to extend that movement out. Um, she's also got grappling hook, so you know range two placement within you know only, only use once per turn as as most of these placements are, but only cost two power, which is quite nice. And then I think the one thing that she's known for Quinn more than anything is Master Cat Burglar. Um, Enemy character within range one, spend three power, steal their tokens. Um, token. 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 Um, she's not Miles. <laughs> she's not Miles. No, thank God for that. Um, oh, right. Let's talk about this quickly, Quinn. Let's talk about precedent that's been set for other characters. Um, yep. This is going to change, isn't it? it? It has to change because it was like this before in Enchantress, and Enchantress saw an errata uh, with alongside a bunch of other characters uh, and it made her version of this cost an action yeah. and I cannot see why the threat less version of Keeps it. the same thing would not also cost an action. I agree wholeheartedly especially when that one threat less character has the kind of other shenanigans that she can do as well like the grappling hook um, you know like the elusive off the back end of Troublemaker and then a long move yeah. um yeah, I just can't see it going any other way. Uh, rounding her card out then, she's got bad luck. So characters cannot modify their attack dice when targeting this character with attacks, which is really nice. And then lastly, stealth. So yep. it's another strange one, Quinn, because again, in Miles's leadership under Miles, this girl, even though she's five stamina, threes across the board, she's going to be harder to take out than your opponent may first think. And it's because more often than not, She's able to get into a position where you can only make one attack against her because you're having to make a move action to get up to her. Now, there are some characters who can place themselves and do whatever else, but for the vast majority of people, they're going to have to make a move. Um, so only getting off one attack and, you know, the fact that she just, you know, nullifies something like a uh, Magneto, for example, uh, or a Nebula or somebody like that uh, yeah. can be really good. And then she's got the rerolls from you know from miles's leadership from as well so yeah. i um, think there is one key thing that like a lot of people don't realize is actually missing from her card a lot of the time which is the fact she's not a wall crawler she's you not a wall have crawler. To think about yeah. terrain for once in your web warrior like yeah yeah she is not a wall crawler um we're not going to go through the rest of the characters, Quinn, because we've gone through each of those in, in detail before. We all know what each of those bring. Um, so let's jump in to the team tactics cards that we've taken. So we've got All Webbed Up, Lethal Protector, Spider Tracker, The Cat and the Spider, Ant May's Wheat Cakes, Brace for Impact, Patch Up, Disarm, Sacrifice, Mission Objective. Um, those last five, Quinn, we know what they are. Right, there's the, the sort of a cycle of six or seven cards that we include all the time, but let's talk 
a little bit about All Webbed Up because I think it's an important card to go through, I mean, explain what it does and how it synergizes with um, potentially Amazing Spider-Man's leadership as well. I mean, th- this is the card where you just have your kill turn. Like, so uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I believe it costs three, right? Uh, I think so, yes. yeah. So uh, any Web Warrior character can play the card uh, for three power. Uh, when they play it, all enemies within three of that character gain the slow condition. Already pr- pretty good. Slow, slow is one of those underrated conditions. Uh, and then additionally, for the rest of the round, whenever one of your Web Warriors characters is attacking someone with slow, they get two extra dice. It's real That's good. That's pretty good. Well, especially when you then start looking at some of those characters, right? Um, all of a sudden, Black Cat at three threat has a six dice builder with a pierce. Yeah. Venom has a nine dice. Um, we are Venom. Um, uh, and let's not forget the fact that Venom can also attack back when it's not his turn, therefore getting more mileage out of this card. Abs- absolutely. Yeah, so huge, huge mileage from the card. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's just real good. Um, uh, what Gwen's builder going from four dice to six, then nine, if she hits them again. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. well, Miles doing a web swing, right? He's actually adding in four dice into his attack roll rather than rather than just two so the 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 combinations are endless um it works it works really well key thing here guys remember is it's allied web warriors so baron zemo's not going to benefit from this or any other character that you bring in um so again it's a it's another one of those cards that i really like quinn because it incentivizes taking characters from the given affiliation affiliation. because if not you're losing out on a little bit um i don't mind this i don't mind this card queen as a guardians player because i love seeing the the, i love seeing the web warrior players face where i just go oh crew of crew of the milano you say (laughs) i mean there's also like a fun little thing with this card it was less of a fun little thing and more just a thing to keep in mind as a web warriors player is it, it doesn't have to be played by the active character no, it like, doesn't. You can it go, doesn't. I'm activating Venom, and like Black Cat's paying three for this, and then Venom eats everyone's faces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just really quickly, Quinn, because it, some people may think it's a bit of a joke card that we've put in here, but um, Aunt May's Wheat Cakes. Um, we, we spoke about these cards, haven't we, before? Because there's a couple of them out there. Uh, that, second wind is the one that comes yeah that, that remove one thing right a specific condition and heal you on and it's like a uh, bit weird but specifically because of that previous card this comes into its own in a mirror match so if you're oh, yeah. up against another web warriors character i mean 10 is enough right you've got enough slots in your tactics roster web warriors i would say quinn are popular enough they're meta enough for, 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 for want of a horrible word um, that you're going to come across them. So put it in. Just Even if just one in five games you come up against them, if nothing else, it's going to really deter your opponent from playing that card um, because, you know, a, a power to remove slow and one, one damage is really nice. Um, you just never get to use it outside of coming up against web warriors so we yeah. wanted to include that as a as a counter to to web warriors I mean, pre- like the, the mirror with web warriors right is always going to be really tight in terms yes. of who gets to win out it's typically going to be based on player skill and also how the dice fall rather than how you build your squad because you're probably going to be quite similar if if one of you has this card and the other one doesn't it's massive. That player is massively advantaged in terms of attrition. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really, really is. Um, it, 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 you know, look at all the movement that they have, and just negating that completely um, is is really nice. Um, Spider Tracker Quinn. Uh, after an enemy character ends a move action within four of an allied Web Warriors character, that allied character may spend two power to play this card. Um, this character. Ad- this character may advance short um it's yeah it's it's another way of being able to keep your objective holder just out oh, of trouble oh, you're, you're chasing black cat no go away no attacks yeah. for you this turn yeah it's you know too, too powerful for a for a short move um isn't 
amazing economy. We've seen better, but it's, it's more the fact that it's a reactive short. Term, exactly right? that. That's the like key strength of it. It's it's the fact that it's out of uh, out of activation, isn't it? Which is which is always super super strong. Um, and then oh oh the cat and the spider is the last one, Quinn. I wanted to go yeah. through. Um, it's a difficult one, this Quinn, because it, it's not it's not the best card. But... No, it, it, I mean, it's it's not quite on par with its contemporaries like Sibling Rivalry, which is, as we all know, called Get Help, for real. <laughs> Get Help! Um, <laughs> and then, you know, the Fastball Special as well. It's it's not got sort of the same damage parameters, it's not got the condition attached to it, but it does have some interesting scenario play. It does. Um, I think where it loses a little bit in terms of, you know, what it does, it's a little bit more flexible in that, yes... One of the characters has to be Black Cat, but it specifically says Peter Parker, which means you can take Core Box or uh, or the Amazing Spider Man, which is which is nice. Um, you know, having you know having your opponent have to make that dodge roll is really nice as well. Um, but then that trigger at the back end where they can pick up or interact with any number of objective tokens without spending power can be really nice. You know, it, it's a way of getting her up and getting into base contact or within range one of an enemy and knowing what black cat can do at the back end quinn that's quite nice because if she's got if she can get up there without having to make uh an action a move action or a move uh, action or, sorry or having to grapple in hook or having to grapple in hook because she's those... then got that for the way back so yeah exactly yeah. so it's i think i think it's it's niche you're not going to be taking it every you know you're not going to be taking it every game but i think there's definitely a uh, there's definitely a spot for it um let's have a look then quinn at the crisis cards that we have taken and all but one we are restricted in terms of what we can take so we've got struggle for the cube scrolls infiltrate well, leadership spider infected so there are the three extracts from the core box we've got infinity formula and riot sparks again both from the core box but we also then have uh, portals overrun with spider people uh, and we have replaced our i can always forget uh deadly meteors deadly don't meteors. we yep. yeah um and, and really quinn portals overrun isn't a great scenario for these guys no, but it's like, better than a seaman yeah, the only reason it's been like replacing deadly meteors in this situation is because it's a D map over a C map. Yeah, yeah uh, D maps is... tend to be what where warriors favour because they're spread out. It means that your opponent can't bring everything to bear against one individual character, which then means that your tankiness is just exacerbated by having all these individual health pools that are being slowly whittled down. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's it, it's a it's not it's by no means a premium selection for them. But it's significantly better than the uh, than the C map. Yeah. Cool, Quinn. So on to the playstyle focus, and it will come as no surprise, Quinn. I think to anybody where these guys sit. Um, but I They're think all what... attrition, right? <laughs> yeah, full attrition. But I think what may surprise them is actually how good they are on the support side as well. Because obviously these guys are a control list, but with Venom and with uh, with Gwen. It brings a huge amount of support into this team, doesn't it? And with you know, and with Miles's uh, leadership ability as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, just the the survivability of the team in general. Like, it it it's sort of the whole thing of like this actually being a circle with three points on it. <laughs> Sounds like someone describing a triangle really badly. It does, doesn't it? A circle with three so, like, points. You know, a circle with three points. You say. <laughs> But effectively, what I mean is that, like, each of the different attributes sort of feeds into the others around it, right? Yes. You know, yeah. through control, you can accentuate your support and attrition. Through attrition, you can, you know, blah, 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 blah. But pretend I'm saying words that make sense. I know you have to. Most of the time. <laughs> well, no, but, it, but it's, it's things like, isn't it? Like, it's like Black Cat's attack that does stagger, that stops your opponent taking an action, which is attrition, but it's also control because it means that they're only taking one action the next turn so as you say every, everything sort of leads into each other doesn't it it really does and like it's just the the way that it feeds into each other i think is far more evident in a web warriors roster than it is in perhaps some others yes yeah absolutely there's a huge amount 
of well of synergy right there is a huge amount of synergy in this team and everything leads into everything else um and i think that's why you know they are they are very competitive at the moment um you know and, and played in the right way um can even with a budget roster you can you know you can easily turn up and and take down a uh, take down a, a local gaming night um let's have a quick then quinn at the the pros starting off with the pros um so pros first of all you sort of already mentioned it but very difficult to kill really difficult to kill and that's through re-rolls that's through stopping your opponent being able to modify their dice that's through these little lifesaver moves through things like lethal protector and you know venom's reactive abilities it just it, it's just la layers upon layers upon layers that just make them that much harder to kill um which um can be frustrating because if you've got a target in mind it can be really annoying when that target you go for gets pulled out of reach and you have to then move towards them and then they've got mission objectives so even if you do kill them they just hand it off to gwen who's next to them because yeah. because she's just pulled it towards them so it can be really really frustrating um the other thing I think that they really benefit from, and it's obviously on the control side, lots of size unrestricted displacement. Yep. All of these pushes that the Web Warriors have, yes, there's the extra thing of line of sight, but line of sight isn't a massive thing in this game. It's not hard to get line of sight. Um, and just being able to pull people all over the board, but big characters, right? Sure, he might not be able to, 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 to push Dormammu anymore, but Gwen can, right? Venom can. Um, so it's yeah, that that unrestricted size displacement can can be really, really good. And then lastly, Quinn, two leaders. You know, let's not overlook how how much of a pro it is to have two leaders and and quite often two leaders that you're playing in the same squad. Yeah, which then means that you get to choose your leadership at the end of deployment so yes. potentially your opponent doesn't know what game plan you're going for i mean it's probably miles but still yeah well i mean it, it probably is miles but um it does mean that you get to make a you get to make a choice if you're coming up against something you go well actually yeah miles is just not the best option here i'm going to pivot into you know i'm going to pivot into amazing spider-man um which you know can catch your opponent uh, off guard um Cons, because as with any list, Quinn, especially with a budget list, there's always going to be some cons in there. Um, first of all, this is just something of the squad itself. Even in the, you know, no, no money, no object, object, we're not going to be able to get around this one. Um, no affiliated two threat characters. Yeah. Um, and it really does, it does hamper them to some extent. But I think having a three threat leader does mitigate it. So yeah, it, it offsets it, and also you have a lot of good in affiliation threes as well. Which you do, you do. You've got Gwen and mind. Black Cat who are really good, and as we get on to in the next roster, we've got some others in there as well. Um, so yeah, so you know, but it's still definitely a, a downside to the list. Um, no access to Mystic attacks, and actually doubling down on that, Quinn. Not only no access to them, quite vulnerable to them as well. Um, we spoke about how how tanky Miles was. Uh, when you start stacking all of these things up um his spider sense only works on energy and physical attacks doesn't it um and i think a lot of them have got lower mystic defense as well i think three is the most that they've got I mean, on three here. is the most but i don't think there's anyone with a two that's affiliated no i don't think there's anyone with a two but what you tend to find is that mystic attacks are bigger they tend to have larger dice pools, don't they? So, Either that or they'll have some sort of trigger on them like Pierce. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, if you lose your defensive tech and you're only really rolling as many dice as you would do for every other attack, it's almost like a double whammy, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, and then one Quinn that you remembered right at the back end of putting this roster together as a big downside and really what has... Maybe one of the biggest factors, Quinn, to scoring this roster down as much as we have done. You get no compared access... to Aaron Collier. <laughs> <laughs> um, no access to advanced R and D, yeah. and the impact that can have for those turn one players. It's um, really immense. Like R and D being able to like 
for example, get an extra power on Miles so he can web swing and attack turn one, whereas he would otherwise double move. Uh, being able to medium pull with Venom turn one with his uh, web snare. Uh, like, Gwen doesn't need it as much because she can walk forward, get within four, do a impact webbing, that's the name of it. Yeah. And gain power that way, but like, you know, Amazing Spider-Man, same thing as Miles, being able to get that web swing turn one, like, it's very, very nice to just sort of set you up for the rest of the game. Oh, it really is, because that means you can, you know, you can web swing, move, you know, pick something up potentially and then get the hell out. Or, um, or like, even r and a power onto Cat so she can go first next turn, stood next to whoever has the extract, feel it and just, just go, away. thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, it's a real it's a real downside for them. Uh, so we have had to you know we have had to score them down um, a little bit because of that. Um, quick overview then, quit at the packs that we've used. So CP one obviously core box, uh, CP zero nine, CP ten, CP thirty seven. Coming in quid, a very respectable $199.80. Um, so under that $200 mark, which is always nice. Um, but as we've said many, many times before, um, these are these are MSRPs. Go to your local gaming store. You're going to get 20 25% discount. If you're in the UK, um, you should check out Elysium War Games. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description below. Uh, Ellis is an absolute top guy. He's sponsored our channel uh, for as long as I can remember now. Uh, he reached out way back when. Um, runs some really, really good MCP events. And actually, we're going to be there, Quinn, aren't we, in the next couple of weeks at his store championship final yeah, the at the back end, of, uh, back end of March, which will be uh, really, really interesting. So, uh, yeah, if you are in the UK and you're looking to add any Web Warriors into your collection, uh, go check out Elysium War Games. Again, there'll be a link down in the description below. Um, Quinn, so that leads us on to the last four parts then of our uh, sort of roster breakdown starting with cost and it's under the $200 mark um, as we know realistically $150 ish is probably what you would be paying for this for a full team uh, for a game like this that's really really good value so they're, they're scoring one one dollar out of five uh, for the for the cost which is yeah which is well deserved I think uh, for yeah, these guys so. um, difficulty Quinn mm. We spoke about this in spider Furs. We're starting to ramp up the difficulty levels now with some of these affiliations that we're breaking down. Where no, they have a lot of reactive tech, right? Yeah, we're no longer in the realms of spend one less power on a superpower per turn or, you know, oh, you did some damage. There's an extra power. Um, they are... There's a lot more to them. There are a lot more... Um, complex from a mechanics perspective as you mentioned quinn the reactive side of it making sure people are where they should should be and then actually remembering to do the thing that you need to do because if you don't advance r d that one power on during your turn oh you can't now do this thing I mean, here you as know, well if you don't do these important things you might end up like rich and be planning for like turn five plays turn five plays you know me quinn turn five plays um so because of that we are going to give them two and a half skulls for difficulty um because yeah they, they are not they are not the easiest to play by any stretch of the imagination um and then um thirdly quinn is adaptability and this one fortunately is where these guys are going to fall down a little bit yeah i mean um, especially compared to the no limits roster right yes yeah and i think it's twofold yes they've got two leaders that's great but they 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 don't have an affiliate at two threat. And there are some very popular crisis cards out there at the moment that are seen in, you know, 60, 70, 80% of rosters out there that these guys hate. I wonder what you could be talking about. <laughs> um, and because of that, Quinn, I, I've, we, we've had to score them down. We've only given them two out of five, two wilds out of five for adaptability. Um, and it, And it's... It's it's really those last two bits really that that drag them down a little bit. That no advanced R and D, the adaptability and the ease of play does drag their score down quite a lot. Um, so overall, Quinn, they're going to score six point six out of ten. Um, so by by no means does that make them a a bad roster. It puts them, you know, above X Force, uh, just below uh, Brotherhood of Mutants in terms of the 
the overall standings. But there's some key tech that as part of a three box challenge is quite hard to get hold of quid, isn't it, for Web Warriors? Um, yeah. And I think, you know, well, <laughs> spoiler alerts, there's going to be quite a jump from the points they're on now to where they uh, to where what? they end up. I know, right? Oh, shock horror. Shock horror. Um, so, so, yeah, but I think overall, Quinn, this roster, a bit like we said with the other ones, right, it was going to teach you the basics, the fundamentals of how to play Web Warriors in that control style. Yes, you can play them in other ways. You can play them aggressive. It takes a lot to be able to do that. If you want any hints, tips, that sort of things on how to do that as well, highly suggest you go and take a look at Web Warrior Protocols. As much as as much as we give him some grief, Quinn, um, you cannot it, argue fairness, with with you know with his give results. Him grief for the way he plays the game. He plays the game very well. We it's give him grief for the kind of person he is. Voice. Yes, I know. I was going with the silly voice, like you know, both words. You're both both me, Aaron. <laughs> Um, but I will put a link down in the description below to, to Arian, uh, to Arians, um, Arians, <laughs> Arians blog, uh, Web Warrior Protocols, because um, he has a different take. It's not a million miles away from what you're going to see in Maiden Quinn's roster next, uh, but he does play them in a, in a unique way. Um, and I think he sort of, he plays them how they weren't intended to be played, Quinn, uh, is, is what I'm going to say. He plays them sort of like an attrition team yeah. with the control abilities available to them. But he makes it work really, really well. So I would highly recommend heading on over there. So, Quinn, let's jump straight into the second roster breakdown. This is the one where we throw caution to the wind, spend as much money as we want. Um, but I'll put a caveat out there straight away. Don't let the price at the end of this scare you because of all the other reasons we've just been through. But we'll talk you through some cards in here that you could get rid of straight away and swap out and save yourself probably two or three hundred dollars is typically how it works out um but let's go down the roster quinn and first of all the first thing i want to say is we have retained every single character um from boxes that we bought extra in this roster which i think is really important and yes really important because it means you can start by you know buy the core box buy the three and then add these other things in if, as, and when you want to. So I think that's really important. So we've got Spider-Man Miles, Ghost Spider-Venom, Amazing Spider-Man, and Black Cat. Um, we've then got uh, one other affiliated character, and that is your boy Moon Knight, um, who is a strange addition to the Web Warriors, Quinn. He's not... You say that, like, Black Cat and Daredevil are affiliated and they don't have spider powers <laughs> this is true this is true um and also but, like moon knight's just done enough cat at this point that he doesn't know he, where he, he actually is or what doesn't he's doing. know yeah he doesn't know who he is he doesn't know what he's doing <laughs> like for all he knows like miles and gwen and like peter parker could be just different personalities he has <laughs> um why is he so good well um i mean first of all he's got a rapid fire right and if you've played a particular tactics card, Quinn, all of a sudden doing a six dice rapid fire range four um, is quite good, to Pretty say good. the least. I mean, like, and even without that, um, he actually is a really nice turn one piece for Web Warriors, I find, uh, because, uh, uh, what, what's it called? Like, unstable psyche? What's the real uh, name for Multiple it? personalities. Yeah, multiple cool. personalities. Not, yeah. not doing care, which is what I Not doing care, no. Um, or, or sacrificing no, to the moon god, as I think Aaron puts it. Pra praise the moon or something <laughs> dumb. Um, but yeah, so he rolls a die at the start of each of his activations. Uh, if he gets a crit, he gets a free move action, which is oh, very nice. Yes, uh, absolutely. You know, if he gets a wild wood hit, which is you know three eight chance, so quite likely, uh, he gets uh, two extra attack dice on his next attack. Yep. Uh, and then you, the other one is if you get a blank or a block, you get a power. Uh, a failure does nothing. Uh, and the reason, like, this is one of the reasons he's a really nice turn one piece, is because if he gets that power, he's suddenly a really good R&D target. Because yeah. he can give out both of those power. Because Moon Knight doesn't need power. Like, he, he really doesn't. Well, more often than not, Quinn, as well, with with that um, with that throwing presence, he may even have five power to distribute out exactly. as well. Uh, which can be really good. Yeah, so, like... You do, so if you get, like, either the crit or the extra power one, uh, then you're almost certainly going to be at either two or three power by yeah. the end of his activation, because yeah. 
the crit allows him to move and then move again, so two mediums, and then he's probably in range four of someone to do with throwing crescents. And hopefully he hits the rapid fire and gets another power, but he's guaranteed at least one from it, which means that you can just dish out that two power and give it to, oh, let's say, Miles and Amazing Spider-Man, or Miles and Venom, and suddenly you've got web swings online turn one and also potentially a web snare to pull people in so that you can, like, web swing to someone, kick them once, kick them twice, and just really, like, really nice attrition piece. I think he brings sort of that layer of offensive attrition to web warriors that they didn't necessarily have beforehand. Yeah, and I think, you know, some other examples there, Quinn, is um, even if you don't get to activate first, you may not even need to make those two moves to get within range four. So there's a chance you can get move once, get within range four, do the attack, and then even move back if you want. Um, or, as you mentioned, if you've given that power out and given some to Gwen, stay within range four of Gwen. And guess what? Even if you have had to move further up the board to make the attack, you can keep Gwen in range to then be able to use that power to then life save you away from the attack that you may take so again it just synergizes together really really well um avatar of Konshu, it brings in you know it brings in a little bit of um of mystic attack um it, it's it's not the best you know it's not the best you know uh mystic attack out there it's got a a size two push i think on the back of on the back end of it with a range back end of it as well. yeah so you get to push and then place which can be quite nice yeah um, it can be cool um he's also got stealth he, he, as well yeah he's got stealth, which, is, which, uh, is, which good. is really nice with that range for rapid fire it means you can hit them without being hit back uh, typically, that's not something you see very often on stealth characters. I think Storm's the only one that springs to mind that can do similar. Yes, yeah. And then he's oh, got and his... of course, Cassandra Nova, who, as we well, <laughs> is extremely tanky. Of course, of course. He's also got Warcrawler, which is nice. And then he's got the Chosen of Konshu, which basically, if he's targeted by a Mystic Attack, two power for two dice. And then he can't be advanced, pushed, placed off the back end of it which he is he gets a magic hat he gets he gets a magic hat and some extra dice for a turn so he's he's a great addition quinn um and i think he adds like you say he adds a bit he adds quite even though you know don't underestimate two four dice attacks for the damage that you can do off the back of it because it's you know it's, it's it's pretty darn good so rounding out the roster then quinn we've brought toad as a our sole two threat character in the roster um extraction plays Watch the video for examples. Move on. We've also brought Black Panther. And Quinn, I was surprised at this one, but this is this is your addition to the roster. So he's four threat. So not the most splashable of characters, but why Black Panther in uh, in Web Warriors? Uh, I mean, for one, Panther is one of the most underrated fours in the game. Um, I've, I've been playing a lot of Panther recently. I've had sort of that Avengers roster I've been playing for a while that's give me quite a bit of success uh and he's just a really nice piece um he's a long mover which i mean long moves are generally so undervalued they're so good yeah um he's extremely tanky especially in web warriors with that reroll from miles along with potentially being able to modify skulls which i'll get into a little bit more later uh because he counts blanks on physical and energy so a lot of the times with that reroll, he's just taking nothing from attacks. Yeah. Which is just wasting your opponent's actions, and it's brilliant. Um, he's a decent combatant. Uh, he has control in the form of his strike because it has a mandatory size 3 push on it, which can be good, can be bad, depends on what you want to be achieving with your attacks. Uh, but then you've got Mantle of the Black Panther, which for 2 power lets him reroll uh, any number of dice on his attacks for the round. Uh, and then when you combine that with Mars' leadership, if he's stood on a point or holding an objective, uh, he can then modify skulls, which means that he rolls five dice, he can modify any of those five, potentially more if he's got crits in there, and just gives them a really, really high damage output. Two characters rounding out the roster then, Quinn. Uh, we've got two choices that may seem a little bit strange, but I want to go to Sam Wilson first. Um, yep. What's Sam Wilson bring in, right? Because he's an Avenger... Um, he's a three threat. He's a leader. Doesn't look like he has loads of tech on 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 the on the sort of front end, but he's got a lot of nice little triggers in there, hasn't he? That works I mean, like, really well. What well, once again, he's sort of been brought over from that Avengers roster I've been playing because turns out Sam's really good. 
like especially when you don't use him as a leader because he is one of the most boring leaders in the game. Uh, well, do you want but, to play um, four hour games? <laughs> no, not really. I don't want to watch him either. Um, but um, so Sam, uh, what 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 can we say about Sam? Uh, he's kind of like Panther, but three threat, right? He's got that long move. Um, he's got a charge, which makes him super mobile and action efficient. Uh, his shield throw uh, is a range four builder. Yep. And he's got a long move charge, so he can reach out and touch anyone in most games. Uh, not only is it a four dice builder, but it's got guaranteed power. Um, it ignores cover and line of sight, which is really nice. Uh, it's got a wild ricochet to potentially hit more targets. And if, it, and if he deals damage with the shield throw, if the target's size two or less, he gets to push them away short. Yeah. Gives you amazing control. Absolutely brilliant control. And, and, and it's important that 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 size two push is off either of the attacks, isn't it? So on the ricochet, um, it, it can do it on both. You can effectively yep. be displacing up to four characters in a in single a yep. in a single activation, whilst also getting a long move yourself potentially if that's yep. what you're after. Or an airlift, uh, or an airlift in or there as airlift. well, and moving you know or moving both. people up. Um, or both. He's also got flight, which you know just coupled with the long move. Is really what do you nice. Mean the guy with bird wings has the flight. guy what with the bird hell? wings has flight. Who'd have who'd have thunk it, right? Right, Quinn. I said no to this. You said yes. Yeah, Why is Ms. I've Marvel got, in there? Look, I've got Big Ron backing me up, and if you if you fight me on this, he'll eat you. <laughs> he will. But uh, Ms. Marvel, uh, well, for one, she's got great synergy with Mars. They share a tactics card. They do. You know, they do indeed. Borrow, uh, which. The, the movement and range on that card is ludicrous when you actually look at it. Like, a range, like a small base to a range 3 with a big base, plus potentially range 2 away from the initial small base, and then a range 1. Miles goes a long way. He does. He goes a hell of a long way, doesn't he? Without using uh, any also, actions for it as well, which is, you know, No really actions important. for it. It gets Kamala into her embiggened form for one power cheaper, and also potentially not on her turn, which yes. can be nice for sort of area denial. Um, Kamala, what can we say about Kamala? Uh, three threat, always nice. More three threats is more good. Yeah. Uh, she's got an inhuman reroll, really nice, especially when combined with Mars's leadership, because if you've already got a reroll, you like being able to reroll skulls as well. Yep. Uh, what else? Uh, so her builder is a range four attack that guarantees power, really nice. Uh, on a wild, you get to do a Gwen or Venom style pull. Yeah. Once again, or a push. Really a nice. push towards, as we call it, Quinn. <laughs> well, we um, call it a pull because that's a logical... It feels like it's energy. a pull, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 But like, you know, you've got that going for you. Uh, she's got a throw. Which Throws is are a, like, a scarce commodity throws. in Web Warriors, isn't it? Yeah, they're not very prevalent. Like, Venom's kind of the only affiliated, like, character throw off a of superpower, Right. I'm going to quickly check that she does throw people off at superpower. No, it is. It's a, yeah, it is. Size 2. So do oh, that bit again. Water, right, yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah, like, they're a rare commodity. Like, Venom's the only affiliated character that can throw characters uh, with a superpower. Um, I was kind of surprised that she wasn't affiliated, because her and Miles are really good mates in the comics. Apparently, I, I'm not a comic man. I don't know. Yeah, we had the trailer drop for her new Disney Plus show as well earlier today. So. Yeah, I've not seen it, but for some reason she's Green Lantern. Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a little bit weird. I mean, it's because you, it's really difficult to make stretchy superpowers look good. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Well, go uh, back like, and watch any Fantastic Four movie and you'll see ooh. how bad they look. <laughs> and um, also, they're just generally bad. She's um, she's also, for a three threat, three four three on her defensive side. Yeah, like with a defensive re-roll plus whatever Mars is bringing. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay then, with like, it. Then you've got the embiggened form who is a damage powerhouse because she goes to size four when she's in big end. And then her high five says that if she's attacking someone that is a size small, is smaller than her in size, she gets to re-roll two of her attack dice, right? Yeah, that's her morphogenetics ability, isn't it? I think is the name of it. Um, yeah, morphogenetics, which yeah. I mean, I don't know why that's not just, you know, a thing on the attack. I, th I, think it's attack. I think it's because... Um, at the end of it, it's at the end of your activation, yeah. you then you transform to into school. Miss Marvel normal. Yeah, there's yeah. also actually an interesting thought I just had regarding Montessi. 
because I think morphogenetics doesn't specify that, yeah, it doesn't specify it has to be the high five. So if she beams a bunch of size two characters, that's an eight dice range three energy beam. Oh yeah, absolutely. Good. Yeah, with the re-roll on top of it because of Inhumans. Very it just nice. it just literally says when making attacks. So yep. So and then you've got her high, her high five. So that's five dice base, uh, and then she's got a re-roll from Inhumans native, and then Morphogenetics gets her another two typically because there aren't that many size fours in the game, and yeah. she's not going to be punching them if there are there if they are there. The range three attack as well, so it's got nice range because uh, you know you've got the range one place. Plus the big base from when she transforms, or the ludicrous distance that a better tomorrow covers, she's going to be able to punch whoever she wants. Yeah. You, suddenly, five dice, re rolling three, including skulls, that can pump out a lot of damage. That's almost kind of like Black Panther with mantle type territory. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Um, I can say it's one of those where I've never been a massive fan of her. Um, it's maybe an era thing as well, Quinn, right? She's a newer comic book character. I mean, it's the fact I'm, that you're a massive boomer, yeah. I'm a massive boomer. There we go. There we go. Um, so, Quinn, let's have a look then at the Team Tactics cards. We've got All Webbed Up, Spider Track, a Lethal Protector. So those those stay in there. Uh, we've taken up Patch Up and put in Med Pack. We've still got Brace, Indomitables in there. Get used to it. Advanced R&D for all those reasons that we mentioned. Um, mission objective, we've already gone through why that's really useful. Ant May's Wheat Cakes for the mirror match. And then A Better Tomorrow, which we've just gone through how that works. So really nice set of, of tactics cards there. Um, and I think, you know, again, that will come into part of the, the difficulty around this is knowing what cards to take alongside what characters and understanding what loadouts are going to work best against particular affiliations and squads that you're coming up against. It's going I mean, to be one of those things. Like, it's going to be... like You're going to have three that I think are solid picks every time, which are going to be R&D, um, all webbed up, and then med pack. And then from there, like, you know, if you're playing pot potentially like a single extract or something like Legacy, you're taking Mission Objective. You know, in, in the mirror, you're taking Ant May's Wheat Cakes. If you expect a lot of throws from your opponent, you're taking Brace. Yeah. Taking Ms. Marvel, you're taking Bet Tomorrow because the range on that is ludicrous and it's really nice to just enable at turn one. Uh, you know, Indomitable, if you plan on getting, if you plan on standing on secures a lot, you might want to take that. Yeah. Uh, Lethal Protector, if you've got Venom, another bodyguard. Nice. One, one thing we didn't talk about, Quinn, was that core three characters, right? And it's oh, yeah. it's it's Spider Miles, uh, Venom, and Ghost Spider, isn't it? They are the, the, the so... main three core, would you say? I think you it's more of a core two than a core three because there are a lot of situations where you want to go wider and can't afford to bring Venom. Uh, so you're, you're always taking Miles and Gwen every game. Yeah. That is just happening. That is your like biggest value box for oh, web as affiliation. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And then from there, like you know, it's just sort of M Moon Knight's often a consideration. I think Ms. Marvel can be a consideration quite often as well, especially if you're taking Moon Knight as well. You are indeed power onto Miles and Ms. Marvel turn one. They do a better tomorrow instantly, and they go a long way. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Toad's yeah, obviously like situational and, and, and yeah, whatever like else. Yeah, to so. Toad's kind of there for Legacy, or if you just need a two-threat to bulk out your numbers. Yeah. Uh, Sam is definitely being taken on Scoundrels, because ignoring cover with that ignoring shield. Ignoring cover is nice. huge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, then Panther's just sort of there as your general uh, four-threat if you don't want Venom. Yeah, I gather if you're coming up a uh, coming up against a particularly, let's say Guardians for example, Guardians, right? Yeah. Black Panther's going to serve you much better than than what Venom is in a, in a Guardians list, I would say. Um, let's have a quick look then at the Crisis cards, Quinn. So, um, I think most things have been swapped out here. We've got Deadly Legacy Virus, we've got Wakandan Herbs, and we've got Spider Infected for the extracts, and then we've got Cosmic Invasion, Infinity Formula goes missing, and then Riot Sparks. Uh, for the uh, for the secures, actually, not everything's been swapped out. We've actually kept, different. yeah, we've, we've actually kept three three cards from the from the core box there. Um, Quinn, I just want to touch on Mystic Wakandan herbs because yeah. we spoke about this a lot, haven't we? Uh, I'm not going to go through Legacy Virus. Look at any other video where we've gone through Legacy Virus because 
it's Black Cat and it's Toad. The plays are, are very similar. And, it, and it's mission objective, and you <clears throat> get them all on Toad, yeah. and then he dies, and you score half the VPs needed to win the game because it's silly. What what is the play for Herbs for these guys then? Uh, typically, it's either Gwen or Amazing Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, and in effect, uh, with Amazing Spider Man, you want to R and D an extra power onto him. Uh, turn one, it, it it can be turn two. It doesn't really matter. But he goes, does his two long moves, picks up the herb. That's him. Then next turn, depending on where your opponent is positioned, you do a web swing with the R&D power that you had. You kick someone in the face for eight dice. Uh, and then you hope that you get the momentum trigger. Teleport to within one of someone who's within two. And then you just long move onto the altar from there. And Gwen is... A little bit different because we don't have Modok and Aim Lackeys in this list. Um, you totally could play that if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, but generally the idea with Gwen is she does a long move after picking up the herb turn, turn one. So this is turn two. Does a long move, punches someone, gets another long move off the back of it, which she can do with the herb because it limits move actions, not just movements not just in general. Movements. Yeah. Uh, that gets her very close to the herb. Uh, there is potential. I'm not sure I haven't tested it. But there might actually be potential for you to, uh, you know, air drop, air lift her off onto the yeah. point. Uh, and actually thinking about it, there's also totally a play you can do with Miles and Ms. Marvel. Where, like, you have Miles go and get the herb turn one. You place uh, Ms. Marvel, range two away from Miles. You then, because you've R&D to power onto Miles, you have enough power for... A better know, tomorrow. Uh, better tomorrow. You do that, she goes an extremely long way, because it's a range 2 from Miles, plus a base, plus a range 3, plus a 65 mil, plus a range 1, plus a base again. And that's without Miles or Kamala even having activated. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's a, there's a couple of different ways to achieve it, isn't there? And um, yeah, and as we say, as we've said before, Quinn... Of all the of all the crisis cards, um, deadly legacy virus and herbs, you want to make sure you've got a plan for them. Oh yes, especially if you're taking them in your list. Um, so uh, so yeah, or if and if you don't have a plan, and you know you've got a way of not letting your opponent play them, don't let them play them. Um, I think they're the two. I think they're the two crisis cards more so than anything else that will you'll find yourself losing very quickly if you don't have a plan going into them. Um, so yeah, if you can stop your opponent playing them, it's not a bad thing to do. Um, let's have a look then, Quinn, at the playstyle focus. And really, it should come as no surprise to anyone that um, that we have sort of doubled down on everything. But what I will say, Quinn, is whilst this is still very much a control list, they score so high still in the attrition and the support game uh, because of what they because of what they can do. But they um, are very much able to switch tack if they need to. Yeah, yeah, they can they can turn they can turn really quickly um, and go into that attrition game and really take the fight to your to your opponent. Um, and it can quite often catch your opponent off guard as well because all they all they're going to expect is little sneaky pulls and pushes and things here and there. Um, and if you just switch that up you know venom and gwen sorry venom, well actually venom gwen and miles can all kick out some real damage uh plus some of the characters on this list as well so um but for this one you know very much still a control player but don't underestimate their attrition game because it can be it can be really really good um yeah. let's have a quick look at uh pros then quinn so uh kind of as a as a uh, uh juxtaposition to the other list access to those turn one players which makes it really really good for them exceptional crisis play um they're just so good um yeah. they're so so good um and then great dice manipulation you know we've added in some of the characters here who have got some re-rolls inbuilt that coupled with Miles's leadership just makes it even better um cons because there are still some um they still don't like demons right they still don't like demons um they're gonna struggle on it uh, they don't like that incinerate on demons either um, at all. It, it can really, really hurt them. Um, the one, the, the other thing, Quinn, is, and you put this one and it makes perfect sense, but they they struggle going tall. Yeah. And it, and it, and it sounds a bit weird for an affiliation that you're often seeing going, going really wide, but if they come up against particular affiliations that are just so efficient 
at murdering. Because, yes, you know, these guys have some defensive tech and the rerolls and everything else, but there's still only three threat characters for the most part. And three threat characters only have a three threat character's worth of stamina and defensive dice and everything else. So, you know, yes, you've got defensive tech, but there are a lot of affiliations out there that can overcome that. Um, you know, Venom, as an affiliate, you know, as a character, just stops you doing all of those things that you do with Miles' leadership. Um, so it's, you know, it can be difficult to to try and match. You may have seen my Thanos video the other day, and Quinn, we spoke about before, haven't we? One of the things to stop that, that Thanos Black Order play is going three wide at 16 threat. These guys can't do that, right? These guys, you know, cannot do that very very well i don't think uh but they they can get three wide at 13 at three that, wide at 13 <laughs> the highest threat they can go and that's yeah. asm venom black panther yeah yeah which is you know i, I would argue not a good matchup against uh <laughs> against a three against a three wide 16 threat list so you know they are going to struggle with that because they you know whilst amazing spider-man is a five threat character i don't consider amazing spider-man to be a big hitter quinn in the realms of a scarlet witch or a hulk or a juggernaut or you know a murdoch even still um he brings other things to the game but you know and his damage output can be good but it's not consistently excellent like some of those other characters that we can that we can put in there so um I do agree with that. And then lastly is lots of reactive play. We touched on this with the last list in the adaptability side and the difficulty side, sorry. Um, and it rings true for this as well. There's even more reactive play in this. You need to think really carefully about every single power you're spending, where you're spending it and making sure you're, you're maximizing that power that you've got. Um, you know, making sure that, you know, I want to place myself here, but I need to keep within range four. And you can't have a range three and a range four placement tool on the board at the same time. So learning to eyeball distances is really, really important with these guys. And that only comes through getting your reps in, right? And 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 learning learning the game and playing the game time and time again. Or, so, you know, playing like four years of guild ball where you had a marked map that had a bunch of distances <laughs> on it and just being really good at it like me uh. yeah there we go there we go um so quinn i'm not going to go into all of the packs that we've used we've actually used you know a lot less in this roster i think it was only well, yeah because we've used a lot of the stuff from each of the packs we bought haven't yeah we? yeah so we're only 13 packs in comes to a grand total of 559 dollars and 35 cents so expensive but but by no means the most expensive roster yeah we've i mean put like together. you know the, the moment indomitable becomes restricted that can be a 12 pack list it can be yeah absolutely and just mentioning a few of those quinn um you know uh what have we got in there that's using uh, i mean packs? we've taken thanos for cosmic <clears throat> invasion cosmic like, invasion. that's a very expensive character pack yeah yeah it's a 65 you know 65 dollar pack for one tactics card uh De um, deadly legacy from sinister as well yeah not not needed and then by not needing deadly legacy means you don't need to take toad which is another 45 dollars yeah or whatever i mean i still is. probably take toad just because he is probably the best two threat for web warriors until for, we for get, web like, warriors spider -ham, yeah i mean come on spider ham's a two we, threat we, right we've got our spider ham we've got to have spider ham so yeah coming in at a total of uh, just under 560 dollars so that leads us nicely in to the final part then of the roster which is breaking down the the sort of final fall stats and the and the roster score overall so um from a cost perspective quinn because it's under that 600 dollar mark I'm going to give these guys three dollars out of four. Uh, sorry, three dollars out of five. Even um, you know, it's it's still fairly cheap, and you can bring that price down significantly as well. Um, and we've got characters here that you're going to see and again be used across other affiliations as well. Toad, very splashable two threat. Uh, Sam Wilson is you know he's becoming a really splashable three threat. You're seeing him yes. a lot in um, in Criminal Syndicate now as well. Mm. right is really good moon knight is a great three threat character um so uh so yeah i think we've got some really nice splashable characters in there as well difficulty 
this hasn't got any easier, but I don't mm. necessarily think it's got any harder. So I'm keeping it at two and a half skulls out of five for difficulty. Yeah, being feels allowed fair. to do those turn one plays, like they're not a difficult thing to do. They sort of just allow you to set up a lot better. Which just makes everything else easier in terms of like power economy and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah which it really sort of does. balances out the fact that you're adding more characters, which obviously increases complexity. But like you know, you're balancing it out with that factor. Yeah, I don't actually think we've introduced a lot of characters there, though, Quinn, that have a huge amount of of complexity. It's a couple of key things to learn, isn't it? Which is why we haven't bumped the the difficulty rating up too much. Um, and then lastly is adaptability, and this is where they take a a huge jump up. Uh, so they went from uh, two wilds out of five in the in the first roster. They've jumped all the way up to three and a half wilds out of five, um, and that's that's really around adding in some more characters that are first of all affiliated. Having that extra affiliated character really really helps. Uh, but then, as you say, Quinn, having certain characters for certain scenarios. So you know, Miss Marvel for this, and Toad for here, and Sam for here really really do help them quite a lot um and all of that quinn leads into a total score of 8.5 out of 10 which is very very respectable and i think is a really fair representation as to where these guys are at the moment so it puts them in third place overall so um chipping out the the black order budget roster uh, so still behind brotherhood of mutants still behind black order but I probably think that's a fair place for them to be at the moment. Yeah, I think so. And there we go, guys. That is our breakdown, or our ultimate guide, I should say, to the Web Warriors. Let us know down in the comment section below. Are there any characters you've taken that work really, really well? Any particular crisis cards you think you've, you know, you've managed to get them to just turn on for always really really interested to see the feedback and things um and this will culminate on sunday quinn we're going to be playing sunday, a game sunday, aren't we? sunday. <clears throat> yeah so we're going to be playing our spider foes versus web warriors game uh we don't know who's going to be playing what yet i think you would prefer spider foes this time around I mean, quinn, I think wouldn't we you both prefer spider foes don't we probably yes killing. probably but so uh, we'll have to see uh who, I mean, who ends up with want, what i just want to play the budget roster which just so <laughs> happens to be spider foes it does it does oh. um guys if you found this video useful in any way shape or form all we ask is that you hit that like button it really really does help uh, if you want to support the channel even further we do have our patreon up and running now and a big shout out to everyone who has already supported us on there again there'll be a link down in the description below and lastly we have our uh, merch store as well where you can find a whole bunch of mcp inspired uh, t-shirts including a web warriors t-shirt as well so again link down in the description below um we've also got our discord server uh, it's completely free to join there's a whole bunch of other people on there talking all things mcp plus a whole bunch of other content creators as well um yep. and yeah it's just a it's just a really cool place to be and it's also it's where you'll find Find. Yep. Go on, I like. Go on, get... Quinn. Go on. It's also where you can find these incredibly beautiful battle cards that uh, all created by the way, Microsoft Paint. There we go. Um, which I had an absolute hiss of it the other day because I accidentally uninstalled it and couldn't reinstall it, which meant I couldn't do anything. So you, you were uh, so, like yeah. terrified of the prospect of learning. I Photoshop. really was. Yeah, I don't want to learn Photoshop. Microsoft Paint is good enough for me. Um, guys, as always, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now. See you.